Hello and welcome to the Crafty Toads podcast. Um, we are the Crafty Toads. Uh, we are on episode seven. 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 Not seven. eight. Seven. No, seven. Seven. We're on episode seven. We should be on ten or eleven. By now, I, I know. And once again, it's been almost three weeks since our last yarn confession. However, you know, life goes on and everything is is good. Um, what is so, it Eric says? My podcast, my rules. There you go. There you go. Um, so we are on episode seven. I am Mary Beth. You can find me all over the in the webs as Mary Beth 494 I am Helen. You can find me as Helen HG69. And we are sisters. We own Toad Hollow. This is our store behind us. Um, you can find Toad Hollow. The website is toadhollownj.com. And then we are all over um, Instagram and Facebook. And well, Instagram and Facebook is Toad Hollow and J. And then. And our Etsy shop is Toad Hollow and J. Yes. And then on Ravelry, we have a Ravelry group. It is the Crafty Toads. There you go, right? Yep. Also, Periscope. We're both on Periscope, and Toad Hollow is also on Periscope. And oh, yeah, I've started going on Periscope as, as on the Toad Hollow account. Um, so if you see the Toad Hollow, it's me. Because, really, I use Periscope to watch Sue Stokes knit 24, yep. and um, she gets, um, she doesn't know which one of us is which. So, and that we're associated with, she knows us as Toad Hollow. That's Toad Hollow. Hollow. Not that, the she, does, not that she just knows which one of us is which. It's that she knows that we're Toad Hollow. So. We go to meetings and they introduce us as the Toads. Yeah. The, either the ladies from the Toads or the Toads. So we decide we're going to carry that. Or through. the Bag Ladies. We've been known to also be called the Bag Ladies. Yeah. We are now the Bag Ladies. It's, um, we pick up some interesting monikers. Yes. My name is Helen. I'm Mary Beth. <laughs> In case you didn't know that. AKA the Dude. Yes. Um, and the. Okay, we also have two store dogs, Spike and Drusilla. Um, as you see Helen bending out of frame a little bit, she is petting Drusilla. And Spike is raising his head right by me. So Right there. <laughs> we are saying hello to them. They come to the store every day with us. Actually, they go pretty much everywhere with us. Um, and so they are here with us today, as always. Um, and hopefully they will be quiet the way they should be. Okay. They're very good dogs. They're awesome dogs. Um, so, as we said, we have a Ravelry group, the Toad, the Crafty Toads, and we have two knit-alongs going on our our uh, Ravelry page right now. Yep. Um, one of them we are doing in conjunction with Vegan Jilly at the Knitting Broomstick. She is doing the Doctor Who fandom Knit along? I think she's just calling it the Doctor Who along. Okay, the Doctor Who along, and um, we are co-hosting it with her with one other person, and I can. Oh, I'm. S I'm so sorry. We, we will put prepare it. Prepare for everything else. I will put it on the screen so you know who else is doing it because there's one other person. It's like a tri-hosting thing. Um, if you would like to have a very good chance of winning a prize. Come enter join our cow. <laughs> enter our cow because nobody's joined yet. And we have a we have a couple people. Um, well, one just put up her Ravelry moniker is Use Your Yarn, and you is uh, E W E. Um, she just put up today that she's doing an eye blink shawl for the Weeping Angels. Oh. So I'm I'm very intrigued to see what that's going to be. Oh, we're going to have to go look for that because um, I am all about. And a couple people have put in that they're going to join the sweater because uh, the other one is the We haven't song. introduced oh, that. Okay, yeah, never go mind. Ahead. Um, no, 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 go ahead, do it. Oh, okay. Uh, I was going to say the funny thing about Use Your Yarn is uh, she also had two dogs that she named Spike and Drusilla. So, kindred spirits. Um, <clears throat> the second cal is our summer sweater cal because, yeah, well, you'll see why when we get to our whips. Not um, only are we about the shawls, we're about the sweaters. Yeah. So we, it's just from Memorial Day, which was a couple weeks ago, to Labor Day, um, which somebody pointed out to me, anybody who is not in the United States does not know what that date is. We, so First Monday in September. It's September 5th, okay. 2016. Um, so whips are welcome. Um, Work, yeah, because it doesn't yeah, have to be finished. It, doesn't, it didn't have to start in on memorial day you don't have to finish by labor day just put up progress pictures of your sweaters that you're knitting during the summer um we are just gonna have 
just um, gonna be fun conversation yeah no threads. fo threads no just, fo threads just conversation threads so unless just, we get millions of people okay then we'll open a separate one okay we'll we'll see right now we're just having conversation threads yeah and it's basically we're just gonna pick from there and um we're gonna have prizes we're not sure what yet but they'll be prizes good prices good prices good yeah. prices um and we have i i know that for the doctor who one we're going to be giving away at least one doctor who bag yeah probably more yeah. so um because we have lots of doctor who fabric and we make bags that's why we're the bag ladies so okay um the so, the sweater one it's just People are getting ready for Rhinebeck, so if you're doing a Rhinebeck sweater. Also, we do not care if you double dip, triple dip, multi dip, you know, oh, poly yeah. dip. Just put them everywhere. Get as many prizes out of that sweater as you can. There you go. I know that um, Knit24 is doing a summer sweater. The fingering. Fingering? Uh, featherweight. Featherweight sweater. No, 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 because she's not doing a featherweight. So I no. think it's just a fingering. Fingering weight a sweater? Yeah, okay. a fingering weight sweater. And it's not Legacy Knits. It's her Knit 24 fan group, right? Right. Yes, it's her Knit, Knit 24 fan group is doing it. And I think there are a couple other people that are doing it as well. As well. So, um, yeah, put them in everywhere. Yeah. We're good. All right. So that takes care of that. Was there anything else that we needed to do for, like, um administrative stuff do we have any questions no spike would like to say no that's his little rumbling sound um okay so sorry i'm i'm putting something for our sh show notes here. we are going to move into oh i will start talking about swaps we both joined a mini skein swap it was the grocery girls and legacy knits joined together to do a mini skein swap and each of them put up a thread and you could join both of them or one of them. Helen joined the grocery girls. I joined legacy knits and I put down that I would like to get a partner from a uh, international partner. Cause I thought getting yarn and stuff from somewhere outside the United States would be cool. Um, so I was, I was hooked up with someone and, um, I left her a message and then I didn't hear from her for about 10 days. So I left a message with the moderator and didn't hear back. So on the thread, I put in that I hadn't heard from my partner. If there was anybody else that hadn't heard from their partners and wanted to swap with me, you know, I was feeling kind of left out. So I thought it would be a great thing to do. And three people, Be careful what you wish. I know three people got in touch with me and said that they would love to swap with me. So I, I said, that's fantastic. Um, and then I, I was putting together the swaps for them. And then I heard back from my original partner. So now I'm up to four swaps. And then somebody, we mentioned it on the podcast that I hadn't heard from many things. So somebody, one of the listeners, um, I think it's Teresa one of our, our viewers said that she would like to swap with me. So now I have, I wound up having five swap partners <laughs> and we actually had somebody come into our thread. Same, uh, use your yarn. Also very, uh, kindly offered to swap with me. And we, we told her that I had five swap partners. So really. And I have two. So, uh, once we beef up our Ravelry group a little bit, we'll probably host our own. Yes. Mini skein. Yes. We'll do so. a mini skein swap too. But, um, yeah, I, I wound up sending five packages. Well, actually, I sent four of them. One of them is on its way out today. And Helen, you want to tell about yours? Uh, yes, I also said that I would uh, prefer international because I wanted to you know, get somebody outside the country, meet somebody new. Because um, I know everybody in the United States. Everybody. Uh, <laughs> um. And I got paired up with Megan from New Zealand, and we talked for, we uh, went back and forth on Ravelry a couple times. She never gave me her address, and then I didn't hear anything for a couple weeks, so I got a new partner, uh, Tina from the UK. Hi, Tina. Hi, Tina. And um, Tina and I have become great friends now. Um, Tina has offered us a place to stay when we come to England. We offered her a place. I'm pretty sure she offered us a place. Okay. Thank you very much, Tina. Tina. We're gonna come stay with you. Right. <laughs> like we're actually gonna. 
I have two dogs, two cats. <laughs> You don't mind, do you? <laughs> Six people coming. No, actually, um, um, the one time we actually have gone on a trip outside of the United States was to England. Know, and seriously, it, it, the minute I stepped off the plane, it, it, it's one of those things where you, you go into a town and you feel like you came home. I actually felt like I was coming home to England. So I think in a prior life, I was probably an English person. Royalty. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Oh, an English lady. At least a at, duchess. At, at, at the very least. <laughs> at least a duchess. So. Um, but then, so I hooked up with Tina and we got everything going. And then um, poor Megan was watching our podcast and saw that um, I, I thought she had abandoned me. And I apologize. Um, and she hooked up with me again and we have now swapped. So yes. That is... The riches are unbelievable, Wait and this will take it. forever. <laughs> okay. Shall we start? Yes. Okay, so... You should probably start, because you're going to take one. Okay, so um, I'm going to start with today, just as we were setting up to do the pie, the pie cast, um, the mailman knocked on the door, and he had two packages for us. One of them was from Martina... And she is, she is Bud Light on Ravelry, um, and she is from Kalamazoo, Michigan. She sent me this beautiful card. Do you know who else is from Kalamazoo, Michigan? Who? Derek Jeter. Oh, oh. No, I did not know that. I knew he was from the, that kind of general That's area. the only reason I know but about Kalamazoo. Well, Martina sent me They're all the peanut butter filled pretzels. Our favorite. Yes. I love peanut butter full pretzels. She sent me a bag full of all sorts of kind of candies, including, can you see that? That does say Godiva. And there's Dove. All sorts of lovely heart candies, um, chocolates, lovely, lovely stuff. Um, yeah. She sent me tea, uh, green ginger, and Earl Grey. These are Tazo teas, which are really funny because Tazo teas are the ones that we include in our swaps too. And she also sent me hot chocolate. Always Yum. Good. Always good. So hot chocolate. And then she sent me this lovely, whoops, almost dropped it, a lovely Della Q drawstring bag with a little pocket inside. It's a linen drawstring bag, or it feels like linen, um, to hold projects in, which is good because I have lots of projects going. And then she sent me these gorgeous minis. Oh, wait, there's, there's more. These are nitpicks, green, and then she's got a little notepad for keeping notes, which is really useful. Little, so I've got that one. I'm not going to show all of them because I have, I think, three four swap partners here that I've got already. So that, I mean, I just, I would take the entire, like, three hours just showing minis. But. Here, show this one. This one has Stelina in it. This one has Stelina. Wow. That's pretty. Does it say anything on these? These on the bag? are Malabrigo, Hedgehog, and Madeline Tosh, and Cyborg. Oh, my God. Wow. I she gave hedgehog. you Hedgehog yeah. and Madeline Tosh. Wow, really, really nice. That was very nice of you. Thank you so much, Martina. So these are my bags of minis from her. Really, really lovely. Thank you so very much. I cannot wait to wait till you see what we're making with them. It's so cool. So. Okay, and then the other package. By the way, I'm... Absolutely amazed at the speed of international postage. Yes. I We send packages all the time. Um, but it just seems like... We sent a birthday present from my mom to her sister. Her sister lives in... Just half an hour away from us. Literally. Took them two days. And we sent a priority mail in the United States. And, and yet... Tina sent my package and it took four days. Four days from England. And New Zealand took... Because that just arrived today. That took about a week. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. So, it is. So so we got uh, our package from Megan, who is from New Zealand. She is Finers 4, I believe, on Ravelry and Instagram. Um, and she 
I felt so bad. <laughs> you shouldn't have. No, this was really very, very generous, but she felt so bad. She sent Mary Beth a package. She gave me one. Look. So she made us project bags. She did. And they're per they're great project bags because the bottom is um plastic. I, I don't think. It, well, I I, I don't. I, I don't There's know the a name way. for it. Yeah, but it's um it's waterproof. Yes. And so it's perfect for the beach for the summer because you take it and you just plop it in the sand. And you've got, you can see through it so you yeah. know what projects you're working on. And it, the bottom is going to get sandy, but then you just wash it off. And if, you know, God forbid it gets wet or anything like that, your, your project is safe. If you go to the beach in New Jersey, especially during August, chances are you're by the water because the black flies come and yeah. you're by the water. Or the green heads, they're both flies. But um, yeah, so look, I got my own bag and with and such with good pattern. stuff. So. And then it's just full, full of stuff. Yeah. I mean, really, Megan, thank you so much for including yeah. me. It was so sweet of you. And one thing we did not think to do when we were putting our packages together, when we were sending internationally in particular, is we did not include anything. I mean, we included locally made things, but we didn't include anything that said the United States or New Jersey. So going forward, we will we will do these things. We should so. do the towel. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this is a post a DVD and I believe what it's going to do is I put it in my DVD. It's a postcard that you, you mail. And I believe if you put it in the DVD player, it's going to show me the area where Megan is from in New Zealand, which is really very cool. Very cool. Um, she sent us all sorts of, had a slight, um, dog break interruption. Somebody came to the door and the dogs went to say hello. So. We have now, um, we're back. Here we go. Okay. So this is the inside of my bag, inside fabric. And she's got a lovely tag inside. And it says, made by Auntie Nana. Um, so I got lots of lovely New Zealand chocolate uh, peanut slab, which is Whitaker's. It looks very much like our Whitman's. Uh, sampler. Sampler. Right. Am writing. I wonder if it's the same company. And maybe it's that's the New Zealand. We'll have yeah. to look it up. Uh, Cadbury Buzz, which is milk chocolate caramel and marshmallow. Yeah. Um, pineapple lumps, which I believe are chocolate covered pineapple. Which is going to be interesting. I'm going to be honest. I have never had that before. No. No, it will be something However, new that we will taste. It's got chocolate. Right. So Basically, how bad can it be? That's all I need to know. <laughs> and I get a New Zealand pen. This is really so nice. Um, another Cadbury chocolate fish. Is chocolate marshmallow fish. We were we were a little worried to begin with. <laughs> and a Cadbury Peppy Chew, which is a peppermint chocolate. All of my favorite things in the world. I just have to say, all of this is in my bag too. Because yes. she was so sweet, she sent them to me too. And then I got a Notions bag inside my bag. Because you do need Notions bags. And inside my Notions bag are my minis. And the one I'm going to show is the one that she hand dyed herself. And I love getting hand dyed yarn, especially from people who don't necessarily sell it because this is one of a kind. Yeah. So it's going to be really cool in my project. Um, but she sent beautiful minis and a pencil. A needle cozy. She is so good because she labeled each thing. Yeah. Half the time we send out our bags without a label in them because oh, yeah. we're rushing to get them out and we forget. It's just an eraser terrible. to go with my pencil and all of my minis. Which is, let's see. All of my minis. So. I have. Just about the same thing in my bag. I have my cozy. No, 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 stop. Or not my cozy. Um, this is my notions bag. 
that has lots of minis and stuff in it. Um, look at that. So pretty. So all sorts of different things in here. Um, oh, I got a green one that's hand dyed by Megan. So pretty. Uh, such pretty, pretty colors. Really beautiful. Lots of chocolate. Um, all sorts of things in here. I, I got pretty much the same thing that Helen did. So just so, so nice. And look at my fabric. It's just gorgeous. Show Thank you inside. so much. I'm sorry? Show the inside fabric. Uh, the inside fabric is green squirrels. I mean, it's a beautiful bag. And then to have all this lovely stuff in it. It's just so nice of you. And you, you weren't even my partner. There's an echidna that I love. So thank you so, so very much. It was so nice of you to include me. Um, really, Sorry, very sweet. The dog. So we got that. And then... Um, you go again. This is my original swap partner from Norway. Her name is Ina. And she sent this beautiful card which is I think from by her in Tron time and she sent some chocolate this um, I'm going to say was because we ate it it was toffee apple chocolate and it was really it was, it was very very good wasn't expecting the chewy apple but it actually was really really good and then um, I got all different kinds of Nor Norwegian chocolate. Lots of Norwegian chocolate. Because I put, I sent, when I got in touch with people, I said that um, we don't drink a ton of tea. So for us, chocolate is always good. So I have dog hair flying all over. Okay, so here are my minis. See, she sent me lots of lovely minis. Tons of lovely minis, including one that was the Opal Holiday Series. It was, it was a part of a... Right? Yes. So that, excuse me, I have dog hair. Um, but it's, it came, only the people that got the advent calendar got this. So this, I mean, so nice. And then she sent me two little progress keepers, which are perfect because I desperately need them. They're absolutely perfect. There's one that's a bird. And there then one that's a flower. Sorry, we're filming kind of far back so that you get both of us in and leaning forward is interesting. So. Okay. Thank you so much, Ina. Your package is on its way and hopefully you will be getting it shortly. I think so. I'm pretty sure that's the only one that I have. Because I think the other two are on their way. Okay, so that was one, two, three. Yeah, because um, you haven't gotten... Teresa hasn't. And then Idaho. Who's Idaho? Oh, right. Nebraska. Okay, <laughs> yes. Okay, so that's... Okay. Okay, so my other swap partner was Tina from uh, the UK. She lives in Staunton, UK. Um, she sent this beautiful card with a, an absolutely lovely note. And look at this card. Because the PS on the note is, I made this card for you. So, yeah. It's beautiful. I'm impressed. Right. Um, this was a lovely piece of chocolate. Thank you very much. <laughs> we enjoyed it very much. Like it was one. called, it's called Willie's Milk. Cacao Milk of the Gods. It really was. Yeah. It's so good. This was a lovely piece of chocolate. <laughs> did we eat that one? We did. It was yeah. a cookies and cream one. Okay. Uh, then she sent um, two little packets of hot chocolate mix. A little thing of tissues. One of my favorites. The little commemorative English tea can. Oh. Okay, it's back on. There we go. I just love this. Yes. Um, a little Knitting Forever postcard. And then 
this is a postcard and in her note she said that you were supposed to read it with the accent and that's how people speak uh, around her I can't even Zumerzet <laughs> more accent on the R <laughs> Uh, Cadbury milk chocolate, the real Cadbury, not the stuff that they ruined over here. A bag of candies and teas. Do you want me to hold something? Oh, you want to hold the box? And oh, these are so cool. Stitch marker. Another little heart stitch marker. A little twisty candy. Progress Keeper, which will go on one of the multiple whips. Oh, and she put this lovely smelling soap in the box so everything smells like lavender. So it's fresh handmade serendipity soap. And it says, don't leave sweet dreams to chance. Try this skin-soothing French lavender and chamomile lullaby. And it smells good. It smells so really, good. really good. Really good. So good. Oh, more candy. You're just crazy. A little drumstick lollipop. Okay, ready? Ready. Do you want to do them all? Or, um, just want to do the ones by her. Okay. This one's by her. She sent me a whole bunch of uh, minis, and she was worried that I was think she was cheap because she sent me the ones that she hand dyed. And to me, that was the whole point of the swap was to get things that you can't get. Elsewhere. And the ones you dyed. And the ones are you dyed. I just, I mean, this this is hers. They're so beautiful. And this one is called Melting Sprinkles. I, this, oh, Tina, that one? This one just screams me. This okay, is my colors. So I, you know how we were talking about how I'm not a big one that I don't like a lot of white in the background? Uh -huh. That's the exception. Okay. I See? love that one. I think that one is gorgeous. Look at the greens. And then I love this one. Look now that, colors. that's me. Just like bright primary colors all over the place. That's me. Just, them. Just so this doesn't go on and on forever. These are the rest. So, such generosity. Thank you from everyone. so Thank much. You so Thank much. you very, very much. So then, I have one other um, swap partner. This actually was the this first takes one that generosity came. to another level. I know. Mary is crazy. She just sent me so much stuff. It's so nice of her. I'm crazy in a really, really good way. Yeah. Mary is the one that you want as a friend. Okay. It starts off with this. Okay. <laughs> this is a cooler that is full of Kit Kat bars. <laughs> this is so cups. heavy. It's just, it's like we wouldn't let ourselves eat any of it because no. we wanted to show the enormity. Oh my oh, god! <laughs> and I just I have to say, say, Kit Kats are our favorite. favorite. Hands and down, my favorite candy bar in the world is a Kit Kat bar. And to fish. top it off, there's a little boy in Baltimore who actually just moved to Virginia, but my nephew loves Kit Kat bars. So I am going to be the most Friend awesome man for life. Yes. Thank you so much. And then she sent me, and I get a cooler out of it too. I mean, it's just she sent me this wonderful card. That is so nice of her. And then we get to the yarn. She sent... Do you want to do the minis first? Yes. She sent um, these for some. There are some in stains. I mean... Look at the sparkly and the purple. It's got so much sparkle. 
Hey, come on, guys. Okay. This one. I oh, my it. God, I love that. And the pigs will eat Love that. Then there are these. Look at this one, too. Oh, my God. Greens and blues and yellows. Who's Gorgeous. That? Premier yarns. Um, this is Madeline Tosh stock, sock yarn. I love that. Then there's, this is Red Heart, but look at the colors in that. Gorgeous. Then there was a skein of... A full skein. A full skein of yarn. Uh, actually, I think it's like a skein and a half. It's uh, 150 grams. So yeah, 100% superwash BFL. I have never knit with BFL. It's hand dyed exclusively for Le Mouton Rouge Knittery, and the color is Redbird. I love the name of that, Le Mouton Rouge. And it's uh, in their soliloquy, which I think is their fingering weight. So 150 grams, we could probably get two pairs of socks out of this. I would think so. Yeah. I mean, that is beautiful. You notice I say we. This is Meredith's package. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. That's okay. And she's sending one to Helen, too, because she's, she's sending. Because but she's that nice person. That's not all. This was the jealous part. This. Oh, my God. Look. She sent me Wonderland yarn. She sent me a package of Wonderland yeah, yarn. It for so can it. There you go. It is the Jabberwocky. It's in the Cheshire Cat fingering weight. It's the Jabberwocky five skein pack. Look this is what this at is the yarn we use for our shawls that we showed last week. Uh, not in those colorways, but the, I mean, we both know how wonderful this. Oh yarn my is god, I love this yarn. I love it's like this a yarn. Cloud. So. I, when I sent her a note, I said that um, I would be sharing the minis and the, the other one with Helen and all the chocolate, but this one is mine. And that's when she said that she is sending Helen a package, too. So so nice. Yes, yeah, so you guys are so, so nice. But look at this. It's Wonderland yarn. I just, I can't get over this. And I have been so good, I haven't touched this. Now you can open it. <laughs> I really love Why this didn't yarn. Why did you cast on a shawl? Because I don't have, you any, don't of have any of those. Right? <laughs> okay. Probably move on to whips. So these are these are um, what we got in the mail. Thank you, thank, thank you, you, thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, do you know how the grocery girls say "party in our mailbox"? Party wow, in the mailbox. We have gotten so many great things. So um, what, we're we're going to start with one of our whips. I'm putting these away. I'll show you what we're going to be doing with our minis. Right. Lots of people are doing the cozy memories blanket, but we decided to do something a little bit different. And mm. we have cast on da, 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 a Mrs. Weasley sweater. And each of us are taking our minis and knitting them into the sweaters. So what we are doing is we are taking one of the minis okay, you want me to hold your and you doing talk. six rows for you each attach? mini. Yeah. Yes. Six rows for each mini. And then passing them to the person, the other person, so that we'll each get to use all the different minis that we get. The pattern is the Lifesaver uh, sweater by Tannis Fiber Arts. No, I want to do it this one. I know. So what we've decided this to do... This is my problem. I pull a project out. I'm only going to knit on this forever. This is the cover page of it. So you can see a big picture. So what we decided we were going to do is we're going to pick a neutral color and do the ribbing along the bottom, the ribbing along the end of the sleeves, and then the, the button, button band. band. They're going to be in a neutral color. And then everything else is going to be in our minis. So that it's just going to be a Mrs. Weasley color splash or um, extravaganza sweater. It's going to be gorgeous. Um, and it calls for a provisional cast on, which I had never done before. No, this was really interesting because... Because you daisy lane crocheted a hundred or so stitches and then you cast on through the chain and you're holding the chain for when you have to go through and pick up for the button band. Because what we're doing is we're doing it top down. Yeah. So this actually... So it's kind of like is the top. So it's a fingering weight sweater. Look how pretty it all is together. I know this is not for some people. 
all the mix, but oh, oh my, my god. god, for us, this is so us. And uh, most of these are from my first um, Theo Librarian was my very first swap partner. Uh, that was through Knit Twenty Four. Knit Twenty Four. Her 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 fan group. So these are the ones that she sent me. But I just oh my god. I kind of I, I I just love the idea of this. And again, I know wearing a sweater full of all the different colors is not for everybody, but awesome. I love it. I really do. And you can see see the green that right there. That's my um, Wonderland yarn, and this teal blue. That's my Wonderland yarn from my original group that I got. My original package I got for Easter. My purple and my yellow are my Wonderlands. The Wonderlands are the things that got us started on this whole knitting thing. Because yep. we had both knit for a long, long time. I mean, we've we've knit sweaters and things like that. But this whole knitting podcast and that yeah. sort of thing, we started watching them and then got really jealous about all the gorgeous yarn everybody was using. And my mom wanted to get us something for Easter. So we had her get us a package just like the Wonderland that um, Mary sent me, only in different colors. So, And Mary had seen our podcast where we wore our cow, our um, shawls that we made so she knew which one not to get me which was so so sweet of her and I am using my Knitter's Pride uh, US 5 the ones that I won and um, very good very good needles interchangeables so this is the five I am using um, Chow, Chow Goose size 6 because I knit very tightly so I usually go up a needle size um, to get gauge um, make up for that. I tried doing them on the Knitter's Pride. I am not a plastic needle person. For me, my stitches are so tight to begin with that um, they just stick to the plastic completely. So I am much happier on a metal needle and I will go metal whenever I have a chance. So that's my... I, I've always wanted to do this. See. Um, oh, I'm going to put my progress keeper on. Yes. Put away my progress keeper. I have to get a progress keeper for this one. Okay, Tina. Progress keeper. On. Nope. Almost on. Twitter guys, sometimes you think it was five years old. Boom. Progress keeper. Awesome. All right, so that is whip number one. So we are doing the summer of sweaters. That is our first sweater. Sweater number one. Yep. Because we, go sweaters? we have three sweaters on the needles. Each. Each. We have a problem. No, we don't. Yes. There's no problem with this. Do. I don't know why you say that there's a problem with this. I'm good with it. Okay, so what's next? I'm going to do my next sweater. Okay, what is it? So I know which one to get pull out. Mine back. Okay. So this is going to be my Rhinebeck sweater and I think this may be a um, pipe dream that you're going to get done in time for Rhinebeck in time for Rhinebeck but you see a crazy woman wandering around with half a sweater on <laughs> <laughs> come say hi she's not dangerous I promise <laughs> Okay. she just has an issue and thinks she can knit more than she can um, so I'm doing the coastal pullover by Hannah Fettig. It is beautiful. It's this got, sweater I mean, is gorgeous. Lots and lots of cables. And we got our yarn from... Okay, so last week, Cooks. last week we said that we wanted to cast on two sweaters and have the third sweater ordered. Right. And we decided we hated the yarn that we had for one of the sweaters, so we changed that right. out. So I have cast on four sweaters. I frogged one. Um, I wouldn't waste too much. You know, it was we cast. Yeah, we, I cast we on knit, you know sixty rows, stitches maybe. and took it out. Anyway, so anyway, I am using. Um, we uh, we've never ordered from Knit Picks before, so we decided to start off with them. So I'm using Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Tweed, and it is colorway two five four two. It had a name. Oh, Autumn Heather. It says right on the damn thing. It is so pretty. It is so, so pretty. 
It's looking a little redder on the computer than it actually is. Yeah, it's got a lot of brown. And orange. It's orange. It's not brown. You really have a problem with your colors. I, I, I don't like brown. No, see? Oh, so that's why you're saying it's orange? Yeah. Okay. So, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's cast on. Nobody said how far I had to go. And again, Knitter's Pride, size 8. Look how pretty the needles are. They're beautiful. With this bright orange cord. That is absolutely nowhere near the color of your yarn. No, it's like a burnt orange in here. It's not brown. Okay. All right. I would like to point out that the needles, blue and orange, colors of Mets. our baseball team. Let's go Mets. All right. So my sweater that I'm doing is the Irish coffee sweater by... You know the people that have everything ready to go with the front of the pattern all front and front and everything? I'm looking at you, Tracy. I will never be that person. Okay. By Baby Cocktails. It's the Irish cocktails, Irish coffee sweater by Baby Cocktails. And that's what it looks like. They do not have a picture of the full sweater. But I am doing it's top down and um, it's basically... Uh, Ribbing. I've gotten a little bit more than Helen has done. I have started my ribbing. Yeah. And Mary Beth is feeling much more kindly towards her projects and she gives each project a day. Oh yes, I have seven projects on the needles, so I've decided that each project gets one day of the week, and I will work on that project exclusively that day. This one is in uh, Knit Picks. It is Wool of the Andes Straight Up um, Wool, and it is Midnight Heather. I thought it was going to be a little bit bluer. It's very dark, dark blue, almost black. However, I think as I start knitting more of the stocking net stitch, it's going to show up more. Has green in here too? Yes, it is a hundred percent Peruvian Highland wool, and so is mine. It is just um, a really thick, luscious. Look at that. Just a little bit scratchy, but it's gonna. I think with the wool wash, it's gonna. Oh yeah. No, there's definitely a flex of green. There's definite green in here. It's. And you know what it's going to be perfect for? Any shawl you want. Right. And if you wear a shawl with like green overtones in it, it's going to pull out the, the flex and, and stuff. So. so it's very, very pretty. And this is in my Spells and Potions bag. I am using, on this, I am using um, size... Eight, I think. Eight, I think. Um, just... I think they're Susan Bates or something like that. They're cheapo, cheapo needles. But um, this is this is in my spells and potions bag in the drawstring that we do. That is my Rhinebeck sweater. That is sweater number two. Sweater number three. Here we go. This is the one that we originally got wool. We had Barocco cottony wool. We sold something. Mm. Yay. Um, it was a cotton, but we thought it was 100% cotton, and it turned out it was a cotton acrylic blend, and it had... Right. Um, like a sheen? There was a sheen to it, and I, I I didn't like knitting with it at all. Yeah, We didn't mind it when we picked it up, and then when we started knitting with it, we realized that we didn't like the feel of it as we were knitting. So, And I didn't like the sheeny look to it right so it was it was, when we were knitting this when you looked at the stitches as you knit it it just it, it didn't look right for me um so i decided to frog mine and helen jumped on board and decided to frog hers as well this is our because this one we're both knitting the same one you will see this this is a i have followed the parameters trend. again on this one in that i um Cast on. Yes. This is a trend with us. We tend to knit the same thing because what happens is one person picks it out and the other person goes, oh, I want to knit that. It's the Tiny Shoots short sleeve uh, pullover. 
We are hoping to get this done at some point this summer so that we can actually wear them. So, um, since it's a short sleeve summer sweater, we went with cotton and we are using the Knit Picks Comfy Fingering Cotton. And this is really soft, lovely cotton. Um, these are my colors. They are beautiful. And what I am doing is I'm doing the neck band and the band around the sleeves and the bottom ribbing in the <coughs> stuff. Lilac mist. And the green is the peapod. And I got a little bit more than casting on done because I wanted to add the green in. So the lilac is going to be the bands and the green is going to be the main color of the sweater? Yep. Okay. These are my colors. I am going gray and salmon. And the gray is called... It's the Knit Picks Comfy... comfy fingering wool. It's called Whisper. And it is 75% Pima cotton, 25% acrylic. Again, acrylic. We keep running into that. But so, so soft. And the thing about the acrylic is it lets you see the stitches. It's also going to give this, keep the sweater, give it a little shape. Oh, so, wrong way. It's your okay. So I am doing the band around the collar is in the gray and then the body of the sweater in the um, salmon color and I may do the entire sleeve in gray because I saw a sweater that had, it was blue with yellow sleeves and it looks so oh. so pretty so I may do the whole sleeve in gray I'm not sure um, but which means the lemming <laughs> will probably do the same um, the salmon color is I did. I was going to talk about that. It's called Peony. So we had a question on um, the our sweater. Our, our sweater along as to whether you swatch or not. And I said, don't do what I do because I never swatch. But this is the one time we I started did. a thread on the Ravelry page. So for swatching and blocking. So if you swatch, do you swatch and block the swatch? Um, what do you sw do? You swatch every project, and then blocking. How do you block? Um, so we'd love a lot to hear of your thoughts. Had, had questions about it, so we figured open up a thread Great. and see what people think. Because um, up until recently, I never really blocked anything. No, um, maybe with a steam iron, but then I blocked out my shawl the other day, and the difference is incredible. Also using the wool wash just right. made such a huge difference. So um, this was supposed to be four inches by like 16 rows or something like that. And I didn't want to spend all that time. So I did a little bit of a swatch just to make sure that A, I like the way it knit and B, that my needle size was right. So I am using um, size six chow goose. As am I. And that's what it looks like. This is going to be, there's a lace section along the top. And then it goes into stocking it. So the gray is actually the top coming and then the lace coming down. So really beautiful colors, beautiful yarn, fun to knit. I just have to figure out what day it is so I can see what yarn I'm working. Today I'm doing my Mrs. Weasley sweater. You can start keeping track. I have a book that I'm okay. going to keep track in. See, I, sh I showed you, you should take the journal, the little journal I showed you and start writing down. Okay. I just work um, on the two that I want to finish. Moving on. All right. So what should we do next? We, ha uh, we have, I have four shawls cast on, which is crazy. One of them I didn't bring with me because it's my Rhinebeck shawl and I have it cast on. I haven't worked on it in a couple of weeks. So I need to actually get working on that. But um, the others I brought. Oh, you want to do your sock first? Okay, go ahead. This is my poor forgotten sock. It is the Wildflower and Honeycomb sock. And it is, I'm knitting it out of Happy Feet in the lipstick colorway. It's a Peruvian yarn. The yarn is so much fun to knit with. It is just a beautiful, beautiful yarn. 
it is pink. And really, I have maybe half an inch before I do my toe. And I'm just enchanted with other projects at the moment. So this is my car knitting. So if we're ever, if we're going to see my mom or driving to yarn stores or delivering things like bags, that. this is what my, I do most my of chauffeur the driving. <laughs> uh, drives me around Ch so James. I can knit. Um, so and, and the, it's, I need it's to a go on knit. a long drive and I can have a sock, a sock. This That's a was, shorter. It is. It's shorter sock, than it? uh, the others, but I kind of I tried it on. And I kind of like it. Yeah. No, I think it's going to be the and right I think height from now on with my socks because I always want to have a pair of socks going because I enjoy knitting socks and I much more than I enjoy knitting socks. I love the my idea of my future handmade socks. Yes. So um, do I. I just need her to knit me socks. So I need a long drive. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm going to do shorty socks so I can do more of them. Um, I do need to start knitting socks because I watch people do their socks and I get so jealous of them. But then when it comes time to knit and cast on things, I tend to go to a shawl. It's, and I don't wear shawls. And they're so fun and easy and fast. Yeah. So come join our Ravelry group and tell my best you need to knit socks. There you go. This was entered into the Grocery Girls Fancy Feet Cal. Uh, Die Another Day Selfish Summer Socks Cal. Now you can enter I believe into it's in the Bakery Bears Summer of Socks Cal. And the only one that has the slightest chance of getting finished in time for are the Bakery Bears because I think I get till September. No, but you know what? Now you can do the grocery girls um oh, my second, second sock. sock. So if I finish one sock for the fancy feet cal deadline of next week, then you can do the then second I, then sock. Then I'll have the second sock to add in there next summer. That's cal. going all summer. And they have at least one awesome prize for that one. Yes. Yes, they haven't gotten it yet, but it's gonna be awesome. So, okay, that is my my forgotten sock. I have two other socks at home that I, my Dumbledore socks that I've shown before that I had done nothing on since the last time we podcast. So. All right, this is my Paris bag that is our extra large knitting bag that we make. Um, this is my distraction. This is the Drakenfels shawl by Melanie Berg. I just want to say. I want to knit Melanie Berg shawls all the time. I love her shawls. This one, I had originally cast this on in a worsted weight and it was 100% worsted wool. It was yellow and brown and orange and it was going to be really, really beautiful, but it was just too stiff and clunky and it just didn't drape it properly. Didn't drape at all. So this Here, hold it. is my progress keeper. From the last time we podcast three weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago. So I've gotten all of this done. I am done the first section, which came to here. And now I'm started you the second section, second section. It's the tight stitches. I know, but God, it looks beautiful. It really is. So these are my first two colors. Oh, so they get to see all of it. Keeps going down. Look and you're not even halfway done yet, I don't think. No, because I still have to get through the rest of this. And then there's the big chunk that's the color C. So mine are all colors of blue and gray. Um, this is actually a light gray. And then my third color, I don't think I have it with me. Um, oh no, I do. This is it. This is, it hasn't been caked yet, but this is going to be color C. So it's going to go with that. So these are Barocco Vintage DK. It's, sorry. I can't see. I think it's 75. It's 50. You see again, 52 acrylic, yeah. 40 wool, 8 nylon. It but fit it's the budget. Just, it, it, well, it's not only the budget, it was the colors and everything. And look how. It drapes beautifully. Look how it's knitting. Yeah, and knits up beautifully. Too. You know, it's know, just. I'm sure you're going to have to block very much. It's just beautiful. Lots of garter stitch. There's no garter. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Just keep in mind, you're like three years behind me. Anything that I've gone through three years later, she goes through it too. So it's just like, you know what? You can say I look old a couple of years from now. Anyway, um, the only thing she will not be is short because I'm just, I'm feeling very short today. This is what it looks like. It's so pretty. And then you put this in with it and it's going to be such a lovely shawl. So that is how far I am with this. I get take to... out rows. Why? Look. 
Oh, see, that's what happens when you fall asleep when you're knitting. Dear. You could just leave it in. It's your handmade. I already have a handmade knit. <laughs> that's okay. You ready? Yeah. We've been doing a lot this week where we um we actually make it to the couch and sit down to knit and we're watching TV and something will end and we'll both look at each other like should we should we do another one? Should we watch another episode? And fall asleep. Then I promptly fall asleep and I should know better than after a certain time because I have two that are the I have three three rows that I'm gonna have I should take out that are the wrong way. This is my Drake and Fells. And my progress keeper is here. So you can see that my obsession this summer, this couple weeks, has been this. Yeah, the colors are so pretty. So mine are, mine are all purples and pinks because uh, the light, light here, this is actually like a very light blush pink. It looks white, but it's uh, a blushy pink. Going down and down. <laughs> it's gonna be huge. It's gonna be awesome. It is. But what I'm talking about is I. She forgot to knit a row. She yeah, pearled I, a row. I, I, I she forgot. actually voluntarily pearled a row. Yeah, I forgot to. No, did I? Yeah. That second row should be knit across. This yeah. should be knit from this side. There is not one single pearl in this pattern. No. It's all knit. So, obviously I was asleep when I did these three rows. So I'm going to have to take them out. It's beautiful. It's not going to make me happy. Do you want to pull out your other color? Oh, yeah. It's over there. We can't get oh, it. Wait. This is the third color. This is my third color. Oh my god, it's going to be so beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. I cannot wait. This will be my, my Rhinebeck shawl. We're going to have to go multiple days so that I can wear, we can all, wear my all my Rhinebeck clothes. things <laughs> that I plan to make for Rhinebeck. I will have half sweaters, half finished sweaters, <laughs> and my shawls will cover the top of me. That's it. Well, I'm going to have my... Over the bottom because my sweaters are all top down. My uh, my original shawl, I'm just going to be trailing my knitting bag behind me. <laughs> half of it will still be in the knitting bag. You will wander behind me and carry my knitting bag with the yarn. We'll bring Brayden. He can be your uh, my, your little bag yes. carrier. Um, but I think about it this way. It's going to make it's like a really standard easy. bearer. Um, it's a built-in carrier for all the wool that we're going to buy. There you go. You know, he carries the bag and we'll Moving lose him. the progress because... keeper up. I know. I moved mine up too. I mean, very exciting. So that, that is the Drake and Pell. So that's shawl number one. I would love by the next time we podcast to be wearing this. But All right. since I get about an hour of knitting a night. Shawl number two is going to be my um, submission for our Doctor Who along. I am making... This is the Pebble Beach shawl. I'm in the middle of a row. Which oh, makes so I can very hold difficult. Okay. To show, but it is Sweet Sparrow Yarns. Um, she's in, from New Jersey. She's from New Jersey. Thank you so much, Julie. By the way, she has Sweet Sparrow Knits is her podcast, and she mentioned us on it, and it was really very sweet. We were not expecting it, and all of a sudden, she's talking about the crafty totes, which was so nice of her, and she said really lovely things about us. Um, this is her. Okay, I think it's the Wren base base because mine's a magpie right i think this is the rent this is where i was last time so i've done that far um and it is in her crocuses color from based on the um secret garden she bases some of her yarns on uh, storybooks from when she was young and the secret garden is one of my all-time favorite books of all i mean really love that book so this is the crocuses colorway and I'm so jealous you got this one. Well, I'm going to have to get another one, I think. So you'll just have to get one then. Yeah. Um, mm. This is the Pebble Beach Shawl by Helen Stewart. Curious Handmade. Yeah. Curious Handmade. And I am probably going to wind up doing the medium size. That's what it looks like. So that I'm going to need another skinny yarn. Anyway, the way I am... I don't think so. 
linking time. this. Why not? Hand dyed is not going to match. Well, who cares? I'm not going to care. Okay. Uh, the way I'm linking this to Doctor Who is when the Tenth Doctor said goodbye to Rose Tyler on the beach. This is my pebble There were beach. pebbles. <laughs> if there weren't, there were. So this is my beach shawl for when Doctor Who said goodbye to Rose. That is my submission for the Doctor Who along, which I cannot really do in our knit along, but I will enter it into Vegan Jillies. And this is in my Fox's bag in our sock size, which it is still very good for, but um, a little bit further I'm going to have to move to a bigger bag. Um, and I am knitting these on... I think size six chow goose. So you may notice a trend here. Falling in love with chow goose. Really enjoy it. But this is this the ball wound. It's just absolutely beautiful. So if you want to find really lovely yarn um, that you haven't tried yet, this is fingering weight. Sweet Sparrow Yarns on Etsy. She is Julie Rose Sews on Instagram. Instagram and uh, Sweet Sparrow Knits on YouTube. She just started doing a podcast. Shawl number two. She has two great cats. Yes, she does. They're chocolate signings. They're gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. This is my Sweet Sparrow orange. This is Pure Reason on her magpie base, which has got the Stellina. And the shawl is the Blight shawl. It is so pretty. Look how far you've come from your progress keeper. Yeah. Here's your progress keeper here. Right there. So you can't really. I there. Mean, is that the yeah, color? you can see. Okay. Well, not so much the color, but you can see the design. See, it's got um, leaf designs in it. So it has leaves. Excuse me. It is so, so pretty. It is this lovely, minty, tealy green. The color is not coming up on this at all. It's got hints of uh, specks of purples and blues. And it's not only specks, because you've got... Um, I don't want to say swatches, because that sounds too big. Right. But they're just strips of like a bluey purple in there that are so pretty. And then there's there, every now and then you hit a white. So that it just, it just, it looks like sea foam. Yeah. And it, I d love knitting the pattern. I love knitting the yarn. The yarn is gorgeous. So the, the blight in my Drakenfels are really, out of all these projects, the ones that I'm in love with right now. Until she starts working on the next one. That's the ball. So you're kind of. You can really catch the Stellina. Yeah. And the, and the blues and the purples. Just absolutely stunning yarn. And this pattern is with the leaves and everything. And this morning I was doing some. I totally screwed it up. I'm so mad. Did you fix it? I have two extra stitches. Oh. And I have to decide whether I'm going to take back a row and try and figure out where the two extra stitches came from. Or I'm going to, in my pro row, get rid of them. I opt for that. I do too, because I've got yarn overs and I slip know. stitches and everything else going on. So... I probably what I will do is I will purl the row and get rid of them and see how bad it looks. You well, probably won't take the whole tell. damn thing out. No, you won't. No, you won't. Okay. Shawl number three. You start talking about that and I'll move my progress keeper. Okay. Tracy from Grocery Girls mentioned in her last, not the one that just came up, but the podcast before that, um, that she had joined the Shawl Society and it was a secret society and you went and you, you have to pay. Um, but then you get to join the secret society for knitting a shawl. And I thought, Oh my God, this is so my cup of tea. I love this idea. So we went and joined, it was nine ninety five or 9.95 British pounds. It, I think it came to like 1486 or something like that. Um, and the first shawl came yesterday. It's called the talisman shawl. Oh, it's Helen Stewart with a curious handmade and the whole thing about it is it will go over the next six months and you will get six different shawl patterns and um varying degrees of difficulty right and all different um 
ideas and, and weights, things. I think, too, yes, as far as it's, yarn, it's going to be all different kinds. So I don't even know what bag it's in. We downloaded it. Mine is in my Doctor Who bag. And I have a love hate relationship with the shawl at the moment. We downloaded it. This is in my Doctor Who bag, drawstring bag that we make. This is going to be, if not this exact bag, one similar to it is going to be one of our prizes. This is my submission for Doctor Who. All right. One of the things about the Curious Handmaid or about Hound Stewart with her instructions, it comes line by line like this. But I'm not going to show the whole thing. And one of the things is oh, it tells you something else. Mm, what line you're on, how many stitches you should have, and the percentage complete that you are, which is really kind of cool. And for this shawl, I am doing it in dragonfly yarn. In that. It's gorgeous. Look at all that color. Oh, I love it. I saw somebody put up on Instagram that she had cast on yesterday, and... She was already like several inches into this. I cast on last night and I have a goatee. <laughs> this is I what mean, I there are done. people who are 50 rows in. Look at the colors in this. Aren't they gorgeous? God, I just love this kind of colorway. It's so beautiful. Anyway, I am on row 14. I'm good with that. I got a set of Chowgu size 5 needles. And you do the first 14 rows on a size 5, and then you move up to a size 6. I do not have a size 6 open right now because they're all the shawls and sweaters are on them. So what I have to do is either go on to um, regular size 6 needles or get another pair. So that's what mine looks or like. Or clear so off a set. Or clear off a set, right. Uh. That is also an option. Who knows? But, um... This goes till the beginning of July, I think like July 2nd. Um, and they're doing, I think they're doing, I'm not sure if they're doing giveaways or not. But you can go and put your, your shawl on. And she said, um, she made a point of saying that you shouldn't feel pressure to get it done within that period. And you don't, don't even have to cast on the next one right away if you don't want to. You just take your time and do it. But you get these six shawls before everybody else does. So you're paying for slight exclusivity and also I'm sorry you know $14 or $15 for six of Helen Stewart's shawl patterns it's a bargain. my god you don't think we have to pay that every month do you no it's a one time thing yeah so yeah $15 and you get six shawl patterns it's awesome I love her shawls I really do the Pebble Beach is also her pattern and it's just so much fun to knit so um, if you would like to show yours, I will see if I can find the picture of the overall shawl so that we can show what it's going to look like. I think it's under this. Is it? I'm going to go get it. So, Excuse my love-hate relationship with this shawl right now is because I had a skein of yarn that I purchased ages ago that was waiting for the perfect thing because I just loved it so much. Um, and I had an absolute caking nightmare with it yesterday. Um, and you me. laughed at me for when I had my problems. It took me two and a half hours of, to figure out how to untangle it. But I won. And I untangled it. And this is my... It's Nooch Fibers. It's, um... I don't know where my tag is. It's over here, I think. Or I put it over for you. We have all Hold the on. stuff. Yeah, it's, it's got it's casters will know what is not being seen by the camera. All the stuff that we have. Is this oh. it? No, that's mine. No. Um, anyway, it's, it's got it's such a great name to it. Nooch fiber and it's hand dyed. And it's my um, submission for Doctor Who. Because I have been calling it my Starry Starry Night yarn. Because it just reminds me so much of Van Gogh's Starry Starry Night. And my favorite, probably, Doctor Who episode of all time is Vincent and the Doctor. So. <laughs> it is a shawl for a doll. But look at how pretty this is going to be. Oh my god, it's going to be so gorgeous. 
I can see this quickly becoming my favorite, but again, I've got it on fives. Um, Chagru for the first 14. And once I'm done, I'm going to switch over my Mrs. Weasley sweater. But uh, I, I need to clear off a set of sixes. I have too many projects. I'm getting stressed out. And you should, knitting should never be stressful. It, it should be fun. And it's not that I'm stressed out. It's just that I really, I want to work on all of them. All of them. And I want to work on the, right now, I want to work on the two that are closest to being done. Because I'm getting excited because I'm close to being done. Right. So I will probably either with the Drakenfells or my Blight. That will be the sixes that will get cleared for my talisman shawl. So this is what the talisman shawl is going to look like. And it, she, she describes it as... Do me read this? You don't have to put your old really close. Oh, stop. Magical, safe, and full of good fortune. Talisman is a carefree crescent shawl inscribed with a simple star stitch. Traditional lore advises that a talisman should always be made by the hands of the one who intends to use it. By my reckoning, that makes this shawl perfect for some selfish knitting. These cherished objects were often made to protect pilgrims on their journey, and it just so happens that the talisman makes a wonderful knit travel knitting project. I love that. I know, it really is. And this says that the pattern has been designed to showcase beautiful hand-dyed yarn, subtly tonal, boldly variegated, or tranquil gradient. And it includes three sizes, so you can do small, medium, or large. I am going to do either the medium or the large, depending on how big it gets. I'm going to do whatever size happens when I run out of yarn. Yeah, so we're going to see how it goes. Because I only have one skein of the nooch, so. It says that... Um, the medium, the small, is a perfect one skein project, and the large is just right for two skeins. I have two skeins of mine, so I may go as big as a, two, as a large, depending. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But um, it's just it's really, really nice. Beautiful to Such work Such a nice with. sentiment behind it. I know. It's just... And besides, you get a, a secret shawl every month. I just... I was actually getting goosebumps and butterflies in my stomach as I was waiting for the pattern to come through because I just get really excited about that. It's like finding a secret, a desk with a secret drawer or something <laughs> like that where you've got something hidden in it. It's fun. All right, so um, do you have anything else or is, are I you think done? I, I think the whip bag is empty. The whip bag is empty. My last whip is my Rhinebeck shawl, which, as I said, I have not done anything on yet right now, so I have to get that into the rotation. And then hopefully next week or when we podcast again, I will have more to show on yep. that. All right, so um, Yarn Crush. Nope, purchases. You would think with all this lovely goodness, we would not have bought anything. We have a new podcast member. You would be wrong. This is the yarn pig. However, we were good. We Everybody did not buy a lot. Wool piggery. So you will know how much yarn we bought each podcast by how much he is adorning. Right. He only has a tiny little bit on. Because and the only reason he has any on is because Chelsea yarn because had, Chelsea a sale. had a sidewalk sale. Yes. Well, no, we we can't say that because we did oh, we get had the nitpicks. We had to buy our nitpicks for, but that, it was a specific reason for that, you know. Right. That wasn't stash. No, and that was that was that was yeah. for a specific reason. So. Yarn pig. Chelsea Yarn is the yarn store that we go to. It's in Coltsnick, New Jersey. It's wonderful. Hi, Christina. I hope you're having fun at TNNA. Um, and she has your sweater done, Christina. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. We actually went to Knit Night last night and had a really, really good time with the ladies that hang out there. And um, Christina is the owner, and she is punishing herself on her train ride to D.C. and making herself finish a sweater that she has she's decided been she needs. <laughs> and she's been working on it for a very long time. Anyway, she had a whole bunch of yarn on sale. Um, so other than we bought, what, two, three pairs of needles? We bought three pairs of needles. Yeah. And then we got a little bit of yarn. So... Go ahead. Um, you're going to notice a, a pattern. Oh, wait, you go ahead. Okay. So I got, this is Nooch Fiber. It is Midtown Sock 75 Superwash Merino. I'm going to say 25 nylon. 100 grams, 463 yards. This is called Unprinted One by Angus Fairhurst. I think she does them around so it's artwork. It's all artwork. 
So that is that. And then to go with this, I got uh, local New Jersey. This to go with it. This is Kismet Fiberworks. It is hand dyed fingering weight simple sock, seventy five twenty five, four hundred sixty three yards. It's a four ply. But together, I am going to make some kind of shawl. I originally thought that I might do my Doctor Who out of this, but then I decided that the Pebble Beach was going to be my Doctor Who submission. So this is caked and ready to go, and this will be caked soon. And it's got purple and blue and red and Absolutely black, gorgeous. and it's just awesome. And it's you. copper. I mean, it's all of your color. Oh, my God, I love this. So these two together are going to make some kind of shawl. I'm not sure what. I also have Nooch. And this is... I didn't realize what the, co <laughs> what the color was called uh, when I bought it. And oh it was sitting God. on the table because I have a plan, semi-plan for this. Oh, I should get the other skein. Um, so it was sitting on the table taunting me. And I said to Mary Beth, I'm pretty sure my yarn is named The Toilet. My yarn is named The Toilet. There Evidently, is there is a painting by John Bratby. Not sure why. Of The Toilet. Has gorgeous colors in it. Because look at this. Look at these purple and the yellow. And there. Some brown. Coppery. Gold. And, oh, it is beautiful. Gorgeous. And it's fingering. Um... 100 grams, 400 yards, 100% superwash. So it's slightly thicker than mine. Yeah. But just. I'm it in love lovely. with this yarn. And I have a hot pink Barbie colored from Connie Knits in my stash. They are going together in some shawl or another. Shawl of Palooza. Uh, Chelsea is uh, Christina from Chelsea Yarns is going to be doing Shalapalooza starting in the end of June, June 25th, I, think. I think. And oh, that's when we're doing our trunk show. Oh, yeah. Okay, we're doing a trunk show at Chelsea Yarns. So, anyway, she's going to start that, and you can enter shawls over the summer. That's great. So that um, and there's some really beautiful shawl patterns coming out. Uh, we saw test knits for Ho Hohi Locatelli's. Party on My Needles, gorgeous. Also, Debbie Reese from the Periscoping Sisters, she has... I think she and Amy both did it. Okay, so yeah. the Periscoping Sisters have um, the... What is it? Oh, random called, Acts of Color. That's it, Random Acts of Color shawl that is just beautiful. So we've seen test nets of both of those, and yes, I will be doing them. Our local yarn shop is doing Shawl of Palooza, and... Like, I need a right. reason to cast on more, more shawls. shawls. But you have to cast on after the 25th, so none of our existing shawls will, will work. So, this baby, shawl of palooza. Gorgeous. And that is it for our purchases. We really were very restrained. Um, Do I need a yarn pick? He will be back, I'm pretty sure. Okay, yarn crush. Did you find your name? No. Okay, speak about talk about yourselves. <laughs> we found on Instagram, uh, it's her Instagram is knitting bunting, right? Yes. Okay, so knitting bunting on Instagram has started putting up yarn that she she may have been putting it up for a while. We just started following her. That she hand dyes. She is in England and um, she dyes them around the uh, Beatrix Potter series. If you can, go on to... What is the name of her shop I'm on... I'm finding it. Okay, it's something Elm or something like that. Um, Elm Tree Yarns. Elm Tree Yarns on Etsy. Just check out the um, Mr. Jeremy Fisher one. Oh, my word. I just want that so badly. I love it. And then she's got one that's Peter Rabbit. And one that is... Um, I think she's got a Jemima. Uh, no, she's got a Tiggy Winkle. Mrs. Tiggy Winkle. It's Tommy Brock. <gasps> Mr. Brock. Oh my God. It's just. Uh, I want. I need all, all of this yarn. All of it. It's Peter Rabbit. 
showing it on the phone is really not no, the best it's way not to really do doing it because it, you get the glare. Uh, that's got Jeremy, Jeremy for sure. Anyway, Elm Tree Yarns on Etsy. They're, they're beautiful. We haven't made the purchase yet, but oh, it's coming. It is coming soon. Very soon. Love it. So that is our yarn crush. Each week or each time we podcast, we're going to name another yarn that we want to start knitting with. And <laughs> that is high up on the list. Hopefully soon this dude will be holding Elm Tree Yarns. Okay. All right. Um, podcast that we've been watching. You want to talk about yours? Sure. I uh, found Dingo Dye Works. I've been subscribed to her for forever. I and mean, she's just been sitting in my queue waiting for me. Her name is uh, Peta. She's from Australia, Western Australia. And she dyes her, her yarn. is absolutely gorgeous. It's um, subtle colors and she does them for the nature. She bases her colorways around the nature of Western Australia. She just did a most recent podcast. She was uh, had a long weekend, and she was, I forget where, but it was on the coast. And gorgeous, gorgeous scenery, and she's she's fun, uh, good li to listen to. So Dingo Dye Works on YouTube. It's also really nice to see things that are outside where we've been, because I love seeing the scenery behind them, too. Yeah. And one of the things about Jenny from Lone Larch is she does most of hers outside, and it's just, I mean, you get to see Canadian gorgeousness right um the one i picked is yarn junkie it's amber i think she's in texas she's she's on the lake um she's got a bunch of dogs chickens a couple of kids gorgeous house but she um she's just so much fun to watch and listen to and um she's just alive you know she's, she's lively and everything like that so she's lots of fun so i recommend yarn junkie all right, um, this toad's life. Another thing. See, we're we're getting this down. Yeah. Episode seven. We're starting to do this. Uh, this toad's life. This is things that we've been doing. Yep. We mentioned knit night because we went to knit night at Chelsea Yarns for the first time. We finally got there before they closed, so that was good. <laughs> um, so you want to talk about the garden club, the garden walk? Sure. Our town. Um, we live in Keyport, New Jersey. It's uh, right on the waterfront in, of all places, New Jersey. Um, and we are on the Bay Shore. The Bay Shore. We have a, we have a gorgeous uh, bay front water area. <laughs> water front. Water front. Right. Um, and we have a local garden club, very active in the community. They do all our local our um, downtown flower pots, and they have absolutely gorgeous gardens. But they put on an event every year called the Keyport Garden Walk, and they have all lots of gardens in Keyport that open gardeners open up their gardens to the public to see it's a free event it's two days over a weekend and you just get to come spend a lovely weekend in June wandering through a historic town with gorgeous houses and absolutely spectacular gardens oh my gosh the gardens are just and they go from novice gardeners to master gardeners a master gardener is someone who has reached a certain level of education in gardening and has to maintain i think a certain level number of credits every year or something yeah, like that education. but um we have but several of them here in town most of the gardens are all done by the gardener this oh, is, yes. these are not you know professionally landscaped uh where they bring in a landscaper and who designs their garden but for the most part they're all so that you go through and you see these gorgeous gardens and you think you know, I could do that. That's the thing. If I, if I, if I take the time. I mean, Rumson is a um, town in New Jersey, very, 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 very well to do. And you, you, they do a garden walk too, I think. But, I mean, those are like the gardens of Versailles. There's no way <laughs> to do those on your own. Um, these gardens, I think, are prettier. Um, and We tend just, to go cottage garden right, type. But they're just... You, you feel like you get inspired. You feel like you could do that. Oh, completely. You can, You walk through and you get completely inspired. And you think, oh my God, okay, so I just need a couple of rose bushes and I can do that. Right. And I need a hydrangea bush and I can do that. You know, and it's... And so generous with their time. They will answer questions. They give up their weekend and they sit in their garden and they just talk to, they talk to people and they're nice. And they, it just such a wonderful representation of our town. Yes. We had... This shop was open... Um, we 
helped organize a butterfly hunt as part of the garden walk this year. Eight of the gardens had a swallowtail butterfly hidden in it somewhere and people had to find it. And then they dropped off their, their entries with us at the store when they were finished. So we were talking to people as they finished up. And um, the one thing that we heard over and over and over again was how friendly people were and how nice they were and um, how much fun people had doing it. Some people, lady and her husband came in from uh, Pennsylvania. They drive out every year. Um, they park the car, take their bikes off the back of the car, and ride through town. We're a town of, I think, 1.2 square miles. So, tiny little town. You can ride. It's a perfect way yeah. to do it. The, the bike is a perfect way to do it. It's a little bit of a long walk from right. end to end because there are some outlying gardens. But... And you're going up and down streets and things like that. It's not like you're walking a mile straight. Yeah. Know? But, um, no, we had 46 gardens on the walk this year. We should... Uh, disclaimer, we are both members of the Garden Club, so... Um, you would never know. Not by our yard. <laughs> <laughs> we have scrub grass. But anyway, but I mean, it's... it's we're working most, towards it. If not the most popular event that the town... And the town doesn't put it on, the Garden Club puts it on. But that is put on in our town. Um, it brings in thousands and thousands of people, and it's just, it's a wonderful event. So, if you think about it, what better way to spend a nice weekend in June yeah. that you just walk around and look at gorgeous flowers and beautiful houses. And we were supposed to have horrific thunderstorms on Sunday starting at like 9 o'clock in the morning and going all day. And I do not know what weather God the Garden Club sold their soul to, but it was a gorgeous day. I'm pretty sure Claire sold their soul. It was just a or beautiful she has day. That kind of Saturday power. and Sunday were both perfect. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, and it was a lovely way. I actually and volunteered for part of it, so I spent two hours in one of the beautiful gardens here in town um, just directing people and giving them, helping them find the next garden, that sort of thing. Somebody actually asked me what one of the plants were. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. Absolutely not. It's a flower. Yeah, it wasn't even that. It was like a plant that had, it's a bush that has leaves that have, it looks like splotches of yellow. Oh, okay. I have no idea. I, I directed them to the owner of the house. That's what I do. But um, there was, he had a bird bath in the backyard because his, the, the house that I was at has a lovely backyard and he's got nooks all over the place where there are chairs just set aside so that you can sit down or branches that you can sit down and just enjoy it. Um, and so quiet, so peaceful. There, he had a bird bath, and there was this robin that was just skipping across the bird bath. It was so much fun to watch. It just, I got to spend two hours in the backyard of this beautiful, beautiful house. So it was great. Loved it. And it's all um, put on by volunteers. Yes, run by volunteers, put together by volunteers. So it's it's their main event, and it is so worth it. Yeah, really lovely. Great job, you guys. You guys did an amazing, amazing job. As always. As always, yes. Um, and as Helen mentioned, we are doing a trunk show at Chelsea Yarns in June, the end of June, June 25th. We will be there. Um, and then we will be doing the Monmouth County Fair in July. Yep. And we will be doing New York, not New York, the New Jersey Sheep and Wool Festival in September. I don't know if we're doing anything else in between. We may be showing up in Asbury Park every We're now We're making then. it up as we go. We kind of are. It's, it's how we do things. We... How we roll. Well, well this is going to seg segue into our next section, which is talking about our bags a little bit. But um, last year, we came up with an idea with yarn bags. We hadn't started watching podcasts or anything like that, so we had no idea that people were doing different project bags or anything like that. It was just we were knitting something, and we needed something to put it in and we ha we love fabric and we bought fabric and we made some and then we thought okay we're going to try and sell these at um craft shows and things like that so we started doing that and it was it was okay it was yeah. well received but it was okay um and around christmas i mean it encouraged us so around christmas we put together some and we did okay at christmas and then we thought okay we're gonna jump outside our comfort zone make ourselves go and talk to yarn stores because they're the people that would really benefit from this and we we are not the type of people which We're is not, not salesmen. a great thing to be for two people who own a retail store but there it is so we made ourselves do this and we went and talked to yarn stores and the response was overwhelming i mean we have finally we did this in march was it february or march 
It's around March because it was Easter. Okay, so it was right around there that we started doing it, and we have finally caught up. It's yeah. now June, and we have finally gotten mm-hmm. ourselves to the point where we are completely caught up. I mean, it was just amazing. We have um, a couple of stores that just call us periodically and say, okay, I need more. And then um, Chelsea Yarns. We just have a standing appointment. <laughs> We basically go once a week and everything we bring her, we t- she takes. It's just, and when we went last night, we brought 22 bags. And before we left, she had sold six of them. Yeah. Um, something startled Spike and he the just kicked over the garbage can. Just attack Spike. <laughs> You're right, man. Anyway, um, it's wonderful for us because we come in and put the bags on the table. And everybody sitting around the table is like, oh, oh. What have you got? And they go diving into the de- bags and oh, that one's mine. And um, it was just, it was really very, very, very good for our yeah. ego. Thank you so much, everybody. But um, we are, we're, we're actually getting ourselves. So we know what we're doing now. You know, we're kind of, we were v- a little bit overwhelmed to begin with. I don't want to say very overwhelmed, but we're a little we overwhelmed, overwhelmed. overwhelmed, but a little bit this. just because, well, no, it's not so much that it's more, we didn't expect it to take off as quickly as it did. And it, so now we're getting a handle of it and we're doing yeah. well. And one of the things we're doing is um, introducing some new bags. So that is our segue into our next section, our bags. We keep saying that we're going to have bags up on Etsy to sell. Um, and we will. We just keep We have some them. up. But these, these guys. All right, so this is our new uh, style bag that we're doing. It is not a design that is exclusive to us. I have seen it with other people. Um, So I don't want to say that we came up with this idea because we didn't, but we use really cool fabric, and I like our bags. This is our pyramid bag. We're calling it the Aaron. We decided to name our bags after our favorite female authors, and the Aaron is named after Aaron Morgenstern, who wrote The Night Circus. And if you haven't read it, I suggest you do because it's an awesome book and I would recommend it to everybody. This is our periodic table. It is huge inside. It's yes. like the TARDIS, bigger on the inside. You can fit you can easily fit. three or four skeins of yarn and whatever project you're working on. And probably on. like a featherweight sweater. Yes. Project. Great for so. shawls. Comes with a handle. So we have the the um, periodic table. This is our science geek fabric that we do. Again, they all have colorful zippers and different fabric inside. And then this is our bird pennants. Penance, as in P-E-N-N-A-N-T-S, not, not penance. No forgiveness. Yes. I love this one. The problem with making bags is as we make them, I say, oh, I, I want them have all. One. I need one of those. So It's just a fun shape, uh, something new and funky. Um, and, uh, Drew doesn't like them. Okay, come on. Come on. We're almost done. So, new design for us. <laughs> American Gladiators. <laughs> <laughs> so, if that's something that you thought you might like, we now have them in the shop. Yep. And we will be making them in all different fabrics. And, um, and if you see something in a fabric and you know of a bag that we make and you want it in a fabric that you don't see just come send us a conversation on etsy yes what's the worst we'll do so you know yeah there you go so that's our bags new thing for bags we really had hoped to um have more bags but chelsea bought them all she did she bought them all last night good thing to have good problem to have okay um all right reading writing not so much reading reading what writing <laughs> i have a secret I am life writing on the, the side. great american novel because <laughs> i have so much free time on my hands what are you reading i am reading 
the all girl filling the last, the last all girl filling station last reunion reunion something the last reunion of the all girl filling station i know this because i just finished <coughs> it. it's by fanny flag um i'm about 10 pages in it's, it's really it's it, it, so far it, I, I know that i'm going to like it um they're great characters so yes i just need to stay awake fanny flag also wrote fried green tomatoes which um great movie yeah. But um, this is the first book I'm reading by her. I have not read. I I saw Fried Green Tomatoes, and the book is named something else. It's something Whistle Stop Cafe, Cafe and, and Fried, Fried Green, Green Tomatoes, something, something like that. Um, the movie was great, <coughs> but um, I have to get the book now because I loved the last reunion of the All Girls Filling Station. I thought it was amazing. I am reading right now, Learning to Breathe by Karen White. When we um, we actually got a chance to do two or three houses of the garden tour before we opened the store on Sunday, and one of the houses um, is just down the street from us, and she has an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous garden. But she also gave us a tour of her house, which was wonderful. An old Victorian. Oh my God, I'm so year old house. I just want to go home and, well, no, I really want the cleaning elves to come and, like, clean my house so that I can rearrange it. So, um, but I want to rearrange it because her house is so warm and welcoming and inviting and I just love the way she decorated it. She did a beautiful job. Lisa, your house is gorgeous if you ever see this. Um, but one of the things is she loves to read as much as we do and she gave us a couple of books to read and Learning to Breathe by Karen White is one of the ones that she gave us and I am loving it. It's like a chiclet book, but it's just, it's a well-written chiclet book because I've had a couple of them that I read that were um, really cheesy. Fun you know, reads, but not But really no not prose. good. Um, this one, this one is good. This one's really good. I love this. So, and we have to get a man called Ove because that is our next book club mem uh, book, and we have to get that and read it before. And the thirtieth, June thirtieth, quickly approaching. Very quickly, so we have to do that. Um, that's next on the list. I think we're done. Do you? Can you think of anything else? I think we are good. We've been I think, going long enough. I know. We have been chatting your ears off, so thank you. Oh, I do want to say, because I know that other people do this, and I think, oh, we should do this. Thank you, everybody, who come back and watch us week after week, episode after episode. We um, know there are a dearth of podcasts out there now. There are tons. I keep running into them, and there's so many, and the fact that you come back and watch us again and again is so nice, so thank you so much. Um, and to anybody new, welcome. We are the Crafty Toads, and hopefully we will see you in about a week or so. Yeah. Um, Before July. Yeah. That's a goal we can set. <laughs> okay. No, actually, we should see you at some point soon. Um, mm -hmm. We just go the way our schedules go. Yep. So. All right. Ready? Ready. All right. Happy Ciao. meeting, everybody. Have a great week, and we will see you soon. Oh, you got this. You got it?